Learning cybersecurity is hard, or is it? In this video, we're gonna talk about the most effective ways to make learning cybersecurity easy. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good, and on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Also make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna start off by saying that there's no magic bullet to learning this stuff. I'm not gonna give you some limitless pill that's all of a sudden gonna make everything click for you. But what I can say is that these strategies have helped me tremendously in my career when it comes to learning some of the most difficult subjects that I had zero prior experience with, yet I was actually able to get a certification in a lot of cases. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments after this video, if you agree or if you disagree, and any tips that you might have that are gonna help other people in this community. All right, let's do this. Strategy number one, do you know how to eat an elephant? one bite at a time. One of the challenges that I constantly see people having is that they try to learn everything at once, and that's not just isolated cybersecurity. Today, time is money, and everybody seems to be in this race to get instant gratification or instant results without facing any kind of adversity. Unfortunately, in cybersecurity, there are so many different topics to learn that it's insane. First, you have to know how technology like networking or operating systems actually work in general, then you have to know how to actually configure it properly. Then you actually have to know how to secure those configurations. And while all this is going on, you have to keep up with everything that's current and any major vulnerabilities that are associated to that technology. Wow. If you try to learn all these at once, you're probably going to fail. The key is that you have to treat your career and your learning progression like a marathon. You might not notice much difference day to day, but in six months or even like a year, you'll see drastic differences if you're constantly learning and improving. I recommend breaking subjects down into small chunks as you learn them, and that way you can really make sure that you understand them and even try to teach somebody that topic. The better that you can explain it to somebody else, the more that you truly understand it. Strategy two, lay the foundation and then dive deeper. This strategy is closely linked to strategy number one, but another issue that I see all the time with people is they try to go too general or too wide with what they know. For example, newbies all the time say they wanna know about security operations and penetration testing, and maybe reverse engineering, and then if there's time, digital forensics. All these areas are complex, and literally, they're their own career path within cybersecurity. A lot of the best jobs and the jobs that pay the most are the ones that have a specific focus. That means you need to know a lot about a certain subject, whether that's compliance or something extremely technical. Now understand that you're not gonna get there right away because you first have to build a solid foundation of knowledge, but then you have to build your expertise in that specific area. If you find a subject that you're really good at in cybersecurity, dive deeper into it and learn as much as possible about whatever it is. If it's compliance, learn as much as you can about the frameworks. If it's about penetration testing, learn as much as possible about identifying and exploiting vulnerabilities and application security flaws. I recommend you start with my free ebook on my website for skills and certifications to pursue, and then really start to identify what you like and dive deeper into it. All right, so this is Paul Jeremy's website, and if you go to Google, you can Google him, or you can look at the web address right up here. But he has something called this security cert chart. So if we click that, we can look in here, and we can see all these different certifications. Now, the reason why I want to show you this is because there are so many different security certifications, not even considering all the certifications and things like that that are for just regular IT and other subjects and technologies. So again, this is just for security stuff. And you can see there's security operations, there's software security, security assessment and testing, security and risk management, asset security, security architecture and engineering, IAM, and communication and network security. And each of these have a ton of different certifications in them. And you can see this would take you a while just to get a bunch of these certifications. But the nice thing is that this kind of gives you an idea of where you can focus a lot of your effort. Now, I'm not necessarily saying go for all of these certifications. And myself, just like a lot of security professionals, we have certain ones that we view more importantly than others. But again, this is just to give you an idea of all the certifications that exist in those certain areas. And certainly, if you just started working your way up and got a whole bunch of these in a certain area, you would become more qualified in that area. But Again, there are so many different specialties that are in cybersecurity that you really can't learn at all and you shouldn't expect to learn at all because there's just honestly too much to learn if you were to try to do that. And you really eventually want to start focusing 
on a specific area that you're good at or that you really enjoy because ultimately that's going to improve how well you do in that area and how much you know. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. If you are, make sure to leave a thumbs up to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future content. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's get back to the content. Strategy three, take notes and get really good at it. Note taking is a skill, plain and simple. The more that you practice taking notes, the better that you're gonna get at it and the easier it'll be to not only retain those topics, but to refresh those topics when you might not have used them for a while. Generally, people are really bad at taking notes and that might not hurt you when you're initially studying that certification exam, but if you ever have to go back to those notes, you're not gonna understand what you wrote and then you're gonna have to start from scratch again. Depending on the topic or the certification, that's gonna lead you a certain way on how you take notes, but the more consistent that you can be with your notes, the better off you're gonna be. Now there's three applications that I recommend for using to take notes. Microsoft OneNote, which is my favorite because it just works and it has some great functionality if you know how to use it. There's also Evernote, which used to be my favorite because it's web friendly. And Notion, which is a newer platform that allows for some unique complexity. But honestly, for me, there's a little bit too much going on with it. I recommend you try them all out and see which one works best for you. But ultimately, just make sure that whatever platform you pick, it's web accessible so you can access it on the go. Strategy four, use multiple learning methods. Relying on a single source for your training is not typically a good idea. The big reason is that different instructors are gonna focus on different subjects and you might learn certain subjects better from a certain instructor than others. Additionally, you might just learn better one way than another. Some people prefer videos, some like audio, and some like reading. There are four things that you should use in your training. Video courses, books like study guides, audio if there's any audio files, or even just listening to the videos instead of watching in case you get distracted, and then Google subjects and find articles or discussions on them. The more exposure in general that you can get to subjects, easier it's gonna to be to learn. And that's because you're just actively engaged in a topic and you're getting different scenarios or examples where that topic is involved. For example, if you're learning about network architecture, it's hugely beneficial to see a lot of different examples of technologies and companies and how and why that architecture is designed the way that it is. If you only use one of these methods, you're gonna be missing out on using all your senses and it's not gonna be as easy as if you use multiple sources. Strategy five, lab as much as you can. Now, I want you to understand that I'm not necessarily saying that if a learning platform includes labs, they're automatically better than a platform that doesn't because that's actually not always accurate. There are plenty of platforms that don't have a lab system for you to play around in. What I'm saying though, is that the more hands-on time that you can get with technologies and the different topics, the easier that it's gonna to be to retain some of this stuff. Even if you're just watching a video and you type the commands along with the instructor, that's helpful. Having already configured labs certainly helps to focus directly on a certain topic, but honestly, some of the best learning that you can get is when you configure some of these things from scratch, and then you have to go through and troubleshoot them when they break. I actually did this a lot when I was studying for my two CCNAs, and it was extremely beneficial. You can even research labs that other people have done and recreate them yourself. That might be considered a little bit more like hand-holding because it's likely that they're gonna give you what works and avoid what didn't work, but it's still building your skills. I would also join Discord servers or other social groups where you can talk about labs and how to configure things with people. If you're lucky, you'll have an expert in there who can guide you, but worst case, you can talk it out with your peers and then everybody wins. Question of the day, what's the hardest subject that you studied either in cybersecurity or IT? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked about some of the most effective ways to make learning cybersecurity easy. Remember, some of your ability to learn this stuff easily is tied to how much effort you're willing to invest, but another big part of it is using proven strategies that will make your career dreams a reality. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.